Hello, everybody. I am Patty Dorito. I am the owner and founder of Holistic Healing Atlanta here in Atlanta, Georgia. And it's a place where people come who want to incorporate the body, the mind, and the soul for their healing. And I specialize in something called quantum neuro reset therapy, which is helping people release traumas out of their body. Then I also do holistic methylation, which is balancing our genes so that our bodies can synergistically heal. So um, I have an exciting program tonight, something that I don't think a lot of people are really quite aware of. If you have any questions, you can uh, put it in the chat box tonight or reach out to me and, uh, and us at any time with any questions you might have. Also, if this speaks to you, please share it. Please share it to your friends and your family because we are poisoning ourselves. So we're gonna move in tonight's program is and the title is, is Getting Clean in the Morning, Killing You. And it's about personal care products. So I used to not think twice about putting on anything on my skin, you know, lotions, makeup, hair, until about eight years ago when my body said, you're toxic. And I started, my body started breaking down in different areas. So I slowly started realizing that the personal care products can be a huge problem for a lot of people. So did you know that the average woman puts on over 500 synthetic chemicals on her body every day without even knowing it, even before she goes downstairs to have her cup of coffee? And the personal care industry is a $60 billion industry. The FDA does not require any pre-market testing or approval. The industry is self-regulated. And in 1938, the Federal Food, Drug and Cosmetic Act was put into place. And that was the, the act said that companies don't have to disclose their ingredients. So it's trying to keep what they do secret so people couldn't copy it. But um, Anyway, so a lot of companies figured out it's cheaper to buy synthetic compounds rather than buying organic ingredients extracted from nature. And it's interesting that the European Union has banned over 1,300 chemicals found in cosmetics that we still allow. Well, well the U.S. has banned eight and restricted three. So it's also... Uh, a, an example is Johnson & Johnson baby powder had an ingredient in there that uh, gave people cancer. So there was a $72 million damage awarded to a woman for using baby powder because she had ovarian cancer. She died of it. So what we place on our skin does matter. So our skin is our largest organ. And 60% of what we put on our skin gets absorbed into our body and it goes straight into the bloodstream. Um, our skin detoxes about a fourth of our daily toxic load. And then, like I said, what goes into our, what we touch goes into our bloodstream. So it's lipstick and that goes into our mouth too. Soaps, shampoos, conditioners, perfume, toothpaste, makeup. Also, just for our children is they absorb 40, 40 to 50% more than the adults do. And so when we're overexposed to these toxic chemicals, they can start to accumulate in our body. And then you might start being at risk for such things as autoimmune disease, cancer, cardiovascular disease, neurological dysfunction, and metabolic conditions. So, by avoiding these ingredients as best we can, we can help reduce our exposure to the chemicals and the adverse outcomes. So what are some of the long-term effects? <clears throat> well, the first thing is that a lot of these chemicals are endocrine disruptors. And so they are chemicals and it can be both natural and, and man-made that may mimic or interfere with the body's hormones. Um, and then they're linked to things like developmental, reproductive, brain, immune, and other problems. And then the endocrine disruptors are found in everyday products like plastic bottles and containers, the liner of metal food cans, detergents, flame retardants, food, toys, cosmetics, and pesticides. 
So tonight, I want to help educate on personal care products and their toxicity and how to avoid them as much as possible. Now, we can't totally avoid them, but we can reduce the load a great bit. So the, there's 12 toxic ingredients to, to avoid. Um, before I get this, one of, the, one of the, a great resource, and I'll show you later, is the Environmental Working Group is an organization that is really trying to fight for our health and the environment and um, all this stuff. They have a great app. It's EWG, Environmental Working Group, that you can put on your phone or your computers and you can check all this stuff. They have great articles. So the first ingredient that I want to talk about is the parabens. And so what are parabens? So if we can go to the next slide. So the parabens are have lots of different names. One more slide past that, please. Okay. So the parabens have different names, butylparaben, ethylparaben, methylparaben, and propylparaben, um, and big words, right? And I'm not a chemist. You know, I just read and learn, especially from the environmental working group. But they're found that the parabens are found in body washes, deodorant, shampoo, facial cleaners, fragrances is a big one. Um, and 70 to 90% of cosmetics contain parabens, which is a little bit scary. So what is it? Well, it's, it's there to help prevent growth of bacteria, mold, and yeast. And you can say, well, yeah, I don't want mold and bacteria in my makeup. But the problem is that it gets absorbed through the skin and it can mimic estrogen and then it can increase breast cancer and it can also damage your DNA. Next one to avoid is fragrance. So with fragrance, can we put that slide up? Oops, since the colors, let's go to that one first. So the synthetic colors and they're listed there, some of the different kinds. They're, just, they're derived from petroleum or coal tar. So that doesn't sound too good to me to be putting on my body, which is going into my skin, which is going into my blood system. But I also wonder why we have to have colors in our, um, like our lotions or, you know, obviously our makeup, we need some color, but the other stuff, shampoo, it doesn't need to be red or orange or yellow. So, um, okay, the next one. The next slide is the fragrances. So fragrance is a kind of an interesting thing with the, that. Fragrances are derived from petroleum. And again, what is the ooh factor? That's like putting gasoline on ourselves. Um, and the fragrance industry is entirely self-regulated. So nobody, no big brothers overlooking that. They, they, there's loopholes all over the place. And they're made, the fragrances are made from synthetic chemicals um, from the petrochemicals, um, and they include the phthalates, which are endocrine disruptors. It also, the environmental working group states that the average fragrance contains about 14 secret chemicals that are not listed on the label. So even if you look on the labels, which I'm going to help you look and teach you how to read labels, even though you might do that, um, they're, they don't have to list those secret ingredients. So again, fragrances are found besides in perfume and cologne, uh, shampoos, body wash, moisturize, um, moisturizers, 80% of them have not been tested for human safety. So um, that just kind of scares me a little bit. In 1966, the fair package and labeling allowed companies not to list their ingredients. Okay. Um, and then the phthalates in the fragrances help the fragrance last longer. So I don't know about you, but when somebody has perfume or cologne on, I can smell them far away and I get an immediate headache from that. And these are synthetic. I'm not so sensitive to the uh, essential oils and things like that. Okay. So the next slide is the triclosan. So that is a um, antimicrobial. 
and you think again, you know, well, that's good. It's in my toothpaste. I, I want to get rid of all the bacteria in my mouth. But the problem with that too is that it gets rid of all your bacteria because you want to, you want to have good. Well, we want to get rid of the bad, but we have the good bacteria that we're also killing. So you can find triclosan and antiperspirant, deodorant, cleaners, hand sanitizers. Um, it's also used as a pesticide and it interferes, interferes with hormone function. And it's also very toxic to aquatic organisms and it may cause cancer. Okay, so the next slide would be the sodium lauryl sulfate and the sodium laureth sulfate. And this is in more than 90% of our personal care products. And what it does, it makes bubbles and foam. Well, the problem is, is that it is a carcinogen, a known carcinogen. It can harm the nervous system and it may uh, interfere with human development. Okay, next one. So the next slide would be propylene glycol. Nope, oh, formaldehyde. I got some of these out of my order. I'm sorry. So formaldehyde, you know what? I mean, that's what they use in embalming stuff. So they're putting this stuff into our personal care products. Again, it helps prevent bacteria growth, but it's a known carcinogen and it's linked to the nasal and nasal pharyngeal cancers. And you can find formaldehyde in nail polish, body washes, conditioner, shampoos, cleansers, eyeshadows, nail polishes. Okay. All right. So what's the next slide? So this is the propylene glycol. This one is actually what they use to de-ice airplanes. And guess what? It is in a lot of products, food products, and also uh, personal care products. Um, so it is petroleum based and it, what it does, is it absorbs water and it helps deliver the, so if it's eyeshadow or eye um, liner, it, it helps penetrate the skin. So it delivers the ingredient to the skin, but it's a skin it, irritant. It can cause allergies and it also can affect the kidneys. Okay. Next slide. Toline. So this is another chemical derived from petroleum or coal tar. Yuck. And um, it can bother your respiratory. It can cause nausea and it irritate your skin. And a big thing that's very important, for, particularly for the pregnant women, is it can damage the fetus. Um, and it's linked to immune system toxicities. Okay. Next slide. So, okay, this is a big one here. So it's the sunscreen chemicals. And mm, since people have started putting some of these chemicals in, the rate of skin cancer has gone way up. Now, I'm not saying that's the only thing, but the chemicals are in endocrine disruptor and they're easily absorbed into the body. So it can cause cellular damage and cancer of the body. I've listed some of the the common names in it. Um, so I don't know the the skin the sun care product I use actually allows the sun the good rays to come in and keeps the bad ones out. There's also uh, zinc oxide which lays on top of the skin. The problem with that one personally is it makes me look white. But um, anyway, I think I'd rather look white than be poisoned. Another thing that is, and I don't have a slide for this, but aluminum. Aluminum is particularly in your antiperspirants. And what it does is it shrinks and plugs up your pores so that you're not sweating. Well, the problem with it, it has been linked, you know, and you can find studies on either side, but it's possibly linked to Alzheimer's and breast cancer. And so I don't know about you. I want to, especially my mother has Alzheimer's and her mother had Alzheimer's. So I wanted to make sure that I'm not just putting this under my arm. It took me a while. I probably went through about eight or nine products before I found one that I wasn't so stinky. Um, I got, and I do sweat, but not a ton, but I'd rather do that than um, uh, have breast cancer or Alzheimer's. So another thing to avoid is any petroleum derivative. And so if you see mineral oil or petrolatum, 
that is something to avoid. So sometimes people will put like Vaseline on their skin or, you know, to make it softer. But again, that is a petroleum based uh, product. When it's petroleum based, it can, there's a carcinogen, it can be a skin irritant and it can cause allergies. Okay. So I don't have a slide for this, but um, I just think it's sort of interesting to toilet paper. So you think about that and toilet paper is pretty toxic. So two things, one, they use chlorine to bleach the paper and, um, and then they also put fragrances in it. So here we are, don't get too personal here, but it, it's getting to a personal place in our body that's pretty tender. So I would make sure that you're not getting color or fragrances in your toilet paper and, and you know, hopefully it's listed on the front of it. Okay, so it's impossible to avoid every single synthetic chemical. We, you just can't do it, but we can limit the toxic load that we do by looking for certain things and say that you love your nails to be done. Well, maybe that will be your toxic load and, and then look at your other personal care products to, just to start to eliminate. I also know that I don't necessarily suggest everybody just throw everything out and buy all new stuff because that gets expensive. But um, so other things you can do besides that of, of having clean, non-toxic personal care products is to make sure that you're eating clean, to avoid chemical laden processed foods, to drink plenty of filtered water, and then look for things that are certified organic if you want to avoid toxic chemicals. Um, I'm going to say educate yourself, do your research before you buy things. And if you don't take care of yourself now, you may pay for it later in sickness. Okay. Um, so I have five steps that you can use to find non-toxic personal products. So, you know, there's a couple of products that are pretty well known for being very clean. The first one is Beauty Counter. Now I have no uh, connection to Beauty Counter, but they really have done a nice job of selling clean products. There's an, but they're expensive. There's another one called Ordinary, and Ordinary is they're plain looking, but they're reasonably priced and they have pretty clean products. Another one that I found is called Lather. And their whole premise is there's no synthetic fragrances. And then they use other good chem good um, ingredients in there. But the five steps for finding non-toxic personal care is read the ingredient labels. You got to start doing that. You just turn it over. And sometimes the print is so small, you can't really see it. But you can go to their website. But you want to start educating yourself because for every product there is with a lot of synthetic chemicals, there's a there's an equivalent in with that's non-toxic and I'm going to call it a little bit clean. Um, you know, some people choose not to do that. My husband uses a few products, which I'll show you that he he wants to. Um, uh, that he just says I want to use that. Okay, so. Let me show you what an app looks like. Well, actually, I don't know if you can see this or not. If I put this up, this is this is on my phone. Okay, this is what the app looks like. And what I can do on this is I can put a product name. Say I put um, I want to know about Revlon, so I just put I type Revlon in. Oops, did spell that right? So it's thinking, so now it comes up with a bunch of different products. So the first one, um, it's Revlon Photo Ready Prime Plus Perfect and Smoothing Primer. And that gets the award. That first one, it says that that's a certified environmental working group product. The next one is, um, it's Revlon Color Stay Brown Mousse 404 Dark Brown. So this is what happens. You get a number two and then it shows you where it's toxic. And if I slide this up, it just tells me all the ingredients this is and it gives a score. So you want the lowest score possible. So I hope that 
get worked for you um, in trying to find that. Um, you know, again, I can show you a little easier if you want to know that. But so if I go to the store, another really cool thing about the environmental group, and I didn't show you this, is they have down here, they have this thing, this the scan bar. So if I just push this scan bar, this shows up. Oops. It would like to ask my camera. Okay. So that shows up and I can just scan a product to see if what, what it is. Now they don't have all the products listed, but it's kind of cool. It's fun. It's actually a fun thing to go to the store and, and see what the toxic, what number they give. Okay. So the first one's read ingredients. Second one, check with the environmental working group app and then start recognizing harmful chemicals and ingredients. Um, and then the next one, the fourth thing is be wary of marketing tactics, tactics that might be misleading. So they might say all natural, but that has no meaning all natural, or they might put, um, you know, made with nourishing ingredients. Well, what, you know, anything could be nourishing, but it's not necessarily healthy for our skin. So they're very good and very savvy. So don't fall for some of that stuff. And then you can look for third party certified products such as the USDA or organic or non GMO project verified or fair trade certified. All those things are third party for them. So the next thing I wanted to do is to go through my husband and I went to the store. He's, he's a good guy. So I went both to Ulta and I also went to CDS. So I'm going to go through some of these slides just kind of to show you um, some of the stuff we have. So can you switch that, Adriana? Next slide. Okay, so this is Charmin. And, you know, again, this is a little bit of a marketing thing, extra gentle. Okay, next slide. Okay, so I, I circled a few problem areas. One, it's got mineral oils, and two, it's got paraffin. Paraffin's made from gasoline. Okay, next slide. Okay, so next thing, we're gonna shave. So what I did, I sort of went in order. So you get up, you go to the bathroom, that's the toilet paper. So this next thing is with this, uh, this is shaving cream. Um, and it's tea tree oil. And this is free of like the parabens and the phthalates and, and things. So this one's, and it says certified fair trade. So, you know, you're getting something pretty decent in there. And then it lists all the ingredients. Dr. Bonner's is a pretty clean, um, all the things that he sells is pretty uh, trustworthy. Okay, next one. Okay, this is what my husband uses. Okay, next. So then I took a, a, a picture of this. So yeah, this is what he, he chooses to put on his face. Um, again, it has an eight, it, the, the highest number is 10. So it's got a lot of fragrance in it. And then it has isobutane, I mean, and I don't know what all these chemicals are, but if you click on that app, it will actually uh, tell you what that isobutane is and, and the colors is. So that's why I love this app. Okay, next slide. Okay, this is the brand of toothpaste that I use. It's clean. Okay, it's with natural tea tree and coconut oil. Okay, next. And then it, this next thing just lists the ingredients. They're all clean. Okay, next one. Um, this this is another sort. It's supposed to be you know it's natural fluoride free. But the next one, um, I have some problems with the next thing because it has the sodium lauryl sulfite. It has carrageenan, and then it has natural flavors. I don't know what those natural flavors are. That's a little bit okay. Next slide, please. Okay, Colgate. Yeah, they, that's a reputable brand. Okay, next slide. 
And so again, this starts with the first ingredients is the propylene glycol. Um, and those, and then it has that laurel sulfite. I don't know. I don't think I want to really put that in my mouth and that PEG and PPG. So, okay. Next. Okay. And this is um, the Colgate. Now, that, so they really have no big problems with that. So that's, that's, I took a screenshot of the environmental working group of it. So, okay, next one. So these next ones are just shampoos of brands that um, are, these for at Sprouts, because you might say, well, where can I get this, this stuff? Actually, if you look, grocery stores have a lot of this good stuff. I went to Sprouts also and, and CVS and then Ulta, but uh, you can find all these clean products almost anywhere now, you just have to look. Okay, so you can slide, you can slide, these are just examples of different um, shampoos and conditioners that I've used, but okay, slide, next one. There's your ingredients, next slide, next slide. The one thing I have to say about some of these, you can keep on next slide, is that you might not like the way it goes into your, like feels in your hair. There's a product that I don't like, it just makes my hair feel greasy. So don't use it. Okay, so this is, um, I wanted to also get to some professional grades. So this is just Paul Mitchell. And if you go to the next slide. Okay, so I just thought this is really interesting. This one has wheat in it. And, um, and it has the propylene glycol in there as well. But for someone who has a wheat sensitivity, and that's me, this would give me a rash you know, both the wheat amino acids, the hydrologized wheat protein and the hydrolyzed wheat starch. I mean, look at it all. And so even if you think, oh, I gotta look at the, you gotta look at the ingredients. Okay, next one. Okay, and this is Biolage, next one. So, you know, again, these are, the problems with, they smell nice, but is it worth that fragrance and that lily oil? That's also a fragrance thing. Okay, next one. Okay, herbal essence for people who like really smelly kind of shampoos. Okay, next slide. Um, and you can see, again, it's got some problems there. It's got fragrance, it's got the sodium lauryl sulfate, the sodium sulfate, uh, sulfate again. Um, you know, that's what makes when you scrub your hair, you get little bubbles. That's what that does. But do I need bubbles? It takes a little bit getting used to when you don't have, when you're scrubbing your hair, you don't get bubbles. Okay, next one. And this is, this is the, um, the environmental working group so again, the, the fragrances a number eight, and then that methyl lysothiazone. I can't even pronounce some of this stuff, but you know, I would avoid that. Next one. Here's Suave Professional, and it says it's got zero percent parabens and dyes, and it's rosemary and mint. Okay, Salon Proven. Okay, next slide. But look at it, it's got a five and fragrance and that same chemical is showing up there. So that's that's smart marketing. Okay, next one. Okay, so this is a uh, liquid hand soap and this is something that I use. Um, okay, next slide. And it shows the ingredients, it does have the fragrance in there. And I don't know if that fragrance is synthetic or if it is um, herbal of essence. I don't, I'm not really sure. Above it says there's no phthalates, sulfates, parabens, ETDA, animal byproducts, gluten. Okay. This is a bar soap. It is gluten free if you want to know. Next slide. And then it says no glycol, parabens, artificial fragrances or dyes, no P. So it goes on there. You, know, you can read this. You just go to the store and, and look. Next. 
okay, this is Dove. This is what my husband uses because he doesn't like the stuff I put in the shower. Next. So it gets a four. And look at that. Again, fragrance is such a big problem. So next slide. Um, this is a, a lotion that I use. Okay, next one. Just I'm show, These are just some examples. Here are the ingredients. Is they're clean. Okay, next one. Um, this is, I like this one, skin food. <laughs> it's light nourishing cream, um, but it's plant extract formula. So next one. So it lists all the things that are there. Um, it does say it has the, um, it has fragrance, but then it has an asterisk and it says from natural es es essential oils. So, okay, next. Here is um, a radically rejuvenating SPF base cream. Okay, then we slide to the next one. And then I just want to show you, this is what they're using to uh, keep our, our skin um, from burning. They're using zinc oxide, which is actually okay. 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 Now here's a Vino, positively radiant, clinically proven to even skin tones and textures. Okay. And then it says it's a total soy complex. Okay, so, but here we have, you can go to the next slide. So, but here we have all those chemicals that I said about sunscreens in there that you don't want, there they are. You know, and those are endo endocrine disruptors. Okay, so be careful. Okay, here is uh, Cetaphil. Um, you know, you, that's at the drugstore. You look at it, it gives it an overall two, pretty good for lotion. Okay, next one. Can we have the next slide? There we go. Okay, so here's Clinique, dramatically different moisturizing lotion. And then it has French in there. Okay, so. <laughs> This one I thought was really interesting because it's got barley. So people who have sensitivities to wheat will also have sensitivity to barley. It's got propylene glycol and it's got all those colors in there. So and colors are those those dyes are never good for our skin. Okay. And that's what the environmental working group gets gives it. And, and the biggest thing there is the colors. Okay, next one. So, you know, like now we're going to go on to some makeup. This is one of the brands that I use, Mineral Fusion. Okay, next. And here's the ingredients. Okay, next. This is what I use for my deep cleaning at, at the end of the day. Okay. And here's the ingredients. You can see they're all clean. Next one. This is a brand of makeup that was, this is at um, Sprouts actually. So um, can you go to the next slide? So it says, you know, every true beauty knows what's inside that matters, formulated without the phthalates, the talc, the parabens, the petroleum. So that's pretty good. Okay, here's a fruit enzyme cleanser. Next. And the ingredients is, you can slide to the next one. This is Burt's Bees. You, know, you have to be careful with Burt's Bees in my experience, because sometimes they have stuff in there that you're just sort of surprised. So you can slide to the next one. And then you can slide to the next one. This is uh, a child's, I thought it was a pediatric, so I thought it was a child's hair gel. So you can go to the next slide. Goes to the ingredients. Um, and it says no sulfates nanoparticles, phytoestrogens, phthalates. So I mean, there you go. Next one. So nail polish can have a lot of icky things in here, but this one I just thought was interesting because it's free of formaldehyde, the toluene, 
um, the phthalates, the camphor. I don't know what that dibutyl is, um, but you know, that's an option instead of more toxic ingredients. Okay, next. This, here's this brand, if you can slide to the next one. And so here's these ingredients. It's really kind of hard to read when I was looking at it, but it's got formaldehyde in there. Um, you know, I don't want to be embalmed yet. I'm going to wait for that. Um, yeah. So, and I, I, you know, I didn't go through all those ingredients, but, um, you know, again, it's just reading them so you know what you're putting into your body. That's, that's the biggest thing. What are you putting on your body and in your body? Next. So OB, okay, next slide. And this is, you know, and that's probably not too bad. I was actually impressed that that brand of nail polish was just a three. So, okay, next. So some lipstick, next slide. So here we have paraffin, which is, it's an oil, uh, a petroleum product and the propylene paraben there. Okay, next slide. Okay, here's uh, some mascara, next slide. And then here we have maltodextrin, which is a sugar. We have methylparaben and ethylparaben. Okay, next slide. Here's some hairsprays. Now I didn't really look too far because a lot of them don't have um, the environmental working group on these, but you can slide to the next one. If you wanna, you again, it's got a lot of perfume um, and that, okay, next one. Here's the retkin, I could not find what, so one of the things too that's important, if it says that it um, neutral fragrance or, um, fragrant free sometimes what it means is they're using another chemical to mask the the smell so um anyway one of the things that i would just say is i would avoid products that have fragrance in it because with the environmental group it's always showing that it's um like a seven or eight and you know it's an endocrine disruptor and what i mean by an endocrine disruptor is that you, whether it's your thyroid or it's, um, um, let me think about this for a second. My brain just went flat here. Um, so it, interf it either mimics or it interferes with your body's normal hormones. So they, so if you're, if it thinks it's getting estrogen, but it's not real, your body is going to use the fake stuff and not use the real stuff. So, um, and there, it just, it can link with developmental problems. It can be linked to reproductive problems. It can be related to brain and neurotoxicity, immunity, autoimmunity. Okay. All right. Next slide. So those are the, the chemicals in there. Again, the fragrance. Next slide. Uh, this is a clean brand, the Stilla. So I actually use this. So you go to the next slide. Um, and this is what they give it. They give it a one overall, but it still has some of these chemicals. So like it might be given a one, but just suppose this phenol, xenophenol, I have a reaction to. So then I have to know, okay, avoid that one product there. Okay, next slide. Here's bare minerals. That's a pretty clean product. You know, think you can read the ingredients. When I was at Alta, they had these signs all over the place that say, don't touch the products because of the pandemic. So I didn't touch too many things there. Okay, next one. Um, Lancome, again, I didn't take a screenshot of the environmental working group, but you can do that. If that's your brand, check it out. Next slide. Okay, so this is um, this is some of the makeup that I use, and it's Tarte. And um, what they don't like about it is that it's got talc, and it's got the phenol, xenol, phenol um, in there. Okay, 
next. Okay, so I'm just going to show you actually what I use. Okay, so that is the soap that I use. That is, I use, I rotate my shampoos and my um, and conditioners, but that is what the, the two that I picked out. Okay, next. Okay, and then after I get out of the shower, I either, so this Jay's Healthy Sprays, she's the one who developed the holistic methylation. She developed this product um, that allows the good sun rays to be able to um, change the vitamin D in you, you know, the sunlight and the vitamin D. So I put that on my face and I put those other two on my body. Okay, next one. This is what my husband uses. Um, he doesn't want to try the natural stuff. He doesn't want to sweat or he doesn't want to be stinky. So, um, and then it's the next slide. But it gets a four. And again, that fur, it's got the fragrance and it's got aluminum in it. So I choose not to use it. He does. So next one. These are the deodorants that I use. And I, I rotate. So this is Soapwalla which is a small company in Brooklyn, New York, that makes it. My daughter just told me about this native um, deodorant. She said you can get it at Target. You can buy it online and this primal paste. Um, so I just rotate because if I just use one all the time, I think I'd be a little stinky. So, okay, next slide. This is the makeup I use. So it's bare minerals and, I, um, and mineral fusion and that's Stilla. Okay, next slide. And then I put this in my hair. So, you know, again, this doesn't have the sulfates and the parabens and the mineral oil. So, um, and I use sometimes this oil in my hair just because it gets dry. So I think, is that, okay. And then this is what I use to clean my face at the end of the day. So I think that is all the slides. Oh. So I found this at Costco and this is sometimes I put on when I really need, like I'm really dried out this stuff. It's made of olive oil and beeswax and pollen. And um, yeah, so I, I like, like to do that just to, you know, I could put it on my feet. I could put it on my hands. I can, it's just like, like it says an all purpose kind of thing. So, um, so yeah, there you go. Break from, um, Costco. So if you have any questions after watching this, you can contact me at holistichealingatlanta.com. You can call me, you can email me. Um, and if you have any other questions or you other concerns, or would you want, what topics would you like to, um, um, discuss. I'm open. So we have a question. It says, what is a good eyeliner? And that's a great question. So what I would do is I would tell you to first look at what you are using, you know, and then uh, see if you can find the ingredients as you might have to go online. And if you see it has all these toxic things or that the environmental working group gives it a poor score, I would go over to um, like, I like Alta. Um, if you have an Ulta near you or any kind of uh, store that sells makeup, you could go to a, a department store and then ask the questions like what's in this. Ask for the little slip if they if it's not showing on it. Take a screenshot from the environmental working group, you know, download that app, you know, because different different people are going to respond differently because sometimes even though it's a clean um, product, my eyes can get really itchy. So that that's one of, that's like how I'd answer that, even though it might be good for me, it might not be good for you. So I hope that answers your question. If not, you can contact me and I'll, we'll talk some more. Okay, so um, yeah, thank you for tuning in. And then next week I have a very special guest and topic which is dear to my heart and it's fitness, a way of life, not just for our bodies, but for our mind and our soul. 
And I, my guest speaker is Crystal Ramhorst, and she is a jazzercise instructor and franchise owner. And we're not just going to talk about jazzercise. We're just going to talk about exercise and why it's good. And, and if we're not exercising, how we can, uh, how we can start. So thank you for listening in and please share this if you liked it.